What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and you remember this computer, this thing I did a video about, probably the most common comment on there was like, Ugh, uh, that wiring, uh, and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna leave it. Well, we can't do that, we can't, we can't leave it. But one of the reasons why I'm gonna go ahead and rewire it is because I also alluded to a problem that he had told me about that I just completely neglected to even really talk about later on in that video, so we're gonna talk about that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do one more video about this particular computer, and I'll tell you guys, uh, I don't know, stuff about things and computers. That's what we usually do around here. The new Z10 gaming keyboard from EVGA features a built-in two port USB hub, volume slider, three-step adjustable wrist rest, and an onboard LCD display, allowing you to keep track of your PCs, PXOC stats, core clock, and more. Find out everything that the Z10 gaming keyboard can do by heading to EVGA.com. So the reason why I have Heaven running here is because I was trying to at least put a load situation on this. This is a Radeon R9 280X, not the most demanding of graphics cards, but it is a custom XFX card, so it's got an 8-pin and a 6-pin PCI Express. But it's running fine. Temperature-wise, we're good. 62C, it's not tripping anything. So I don't know if the power supply was actually bad, but once I see that overvolt protection, I, I'm not comfortable with the power supply anymore. Don't want to take a chance on their computer when I have the ability to swap it out for them. And I'm not going to charge them for any of this. I just don't want their computer to die. So I'm going to be putting in a Master Watt 550. And the reason for this, the wattage is perfect. This is a 4670K with a, like I said, a 280X. Not a very demanding system, but we've got all black cables. So that's going to allow me to go ahead and kind of clean up this mess. Most common comment, like I said in the intro, was, oh my God, that wiring, how dare they? Well, we're going to go ahead and fix that for them while we're in there. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get to it. Here's our S XFX 280X. Oh, look at the dust in that. Yeah, we got more cleaning to do on this. Definitely. Something else I wanted to mention too, about the smart disable on the other video. I disabled it so that I could get past it to get into the OS because once you get that error, it didn't want to continue past it. Um, but I did, I re-enabled smart check and we did not get a smart check failure, which is why a lot of you got mad. Like, why would you disable smart guys? It was just temporary. And it wasn't smart on the SSD that was failing. It was on their Western Digital Black Drive. I did indeed tell them, you need to back up this hard drive and replace it. But um, yeah, I'm not showing you guys the back again because I don't think anyone wants to see that carnage. What are you doing? Don't show them this, no. So you guys saw the long list of issues this computer had in the other video. Something else I'm noticing here is if you look at this, the motherboard is missing like most of its standoffs. You see that? You know what, I wanna talk about this real quick and I wanna talk about the community for just a second because I saw a lot of really just unwelcoming comments from people. Guys, nobody, builds their first computer and does it right and perfect the first time. It's really wrong for you guys to be as judgmental as you were regarding this person's build. That's not the kind of community that we want to condone around here. My whole point with this channel is to teach people and help people have confidence in doing these types of builds and build their first computer and stuff. And there's nothing more shitty than building your first computer and being proud that it booted and then having the community just shit on you because the wires aren't as pretty or as clean as you think they should be. So you know what? Knock that shit off. So now that Preacher J is done, let's go ahead and take this Antec out of here. I could not get it to give me another voltage warning, but like I said, once I see them, once I'm not comfortable with leaving it in there. So the reason why this is so wobbly, the, there's only two screws holding in the motherboard the bottom right and the top left. Kind of reminiscent of the way Jerry builds computers. Yeah, that's a, that's a throwback to his uh, challenge accepted way of building, time build. And on top of that, only two standoffs. So I'm starting to wonder if maybe the voltage issue we were dealing with was potentially because of the fact that it could have been grounding back here. Cause I even see scratches here. Cause you see how you have these, these solders that stick out? These are technically coated to keep from hopefully causing shorts, but if there's no standoffs and this thing's being pushed back, that could cause the problem. So obviously we're gonna be adding some standoffs to this now, cleaning off this cooler a little more, which looks like somebody has spilled something liquid in this computer at one point too. Like that looks like liquid, bleh, like someone dropped Coke or something in here. Another reason why I personally don't put computers on the floor next to my desk either. 
The nice thing about having so many cases and stuff around here and all the little toolkits and stuff that come with them is I have tons of standoffs available. So there's that. This was probably a little bit of a rush job on their part. That could have potentially caused quite a bit of damage. A lot of people were getting mad at me like, Jay, you should have, you should have just handled that. Well, fine, I'm handling it now. Get off my nuts. It also has mismatched RAM. We have two different types of ballistics in here. So this is starting to look more and more like a uh, PC building simulator build. I do that all the time on there to save money. I just kind of put in cheap RAM with expensive RAM if they want an upgrade. They'll never know the difference. There we go. All right, so we got all their standoffs in there now. I'm also gonna be replacing the fans on their cooler. They had some mismatched fans here, one of the Zalman fans and then this Antec fan. This Antec fan is not looking too good. There's a lot of side to side movement in this, not just up and down, which is normal, but side to side. This fan will probably go bad next. And I'm putting in two of my, these are the older EK fans. These are the EK Silent 120s. So we'll be putting those on there, which will obviously increase the aesthetics of the build a little bit as well. And I'm also gonna be putting more screws in their hard drive because there's only one holding that on there. Where I'm gonna have my friend give a talk to their friend. Remember, this isn't my friend's computer. This is, this is one that he was trying to help out with and he finally was like, dude, dude, I need you to take over on this one. And I was like, I got this. The other thing too was on the CPU fans, each fan would plug into something else. So they weren't running like the same speed. And so you would have the fan blowing harder into the other fan, not letting the air out, which was just counterproductive. So I ended up taking off this top fan to have better access to the 810 EPS power and then these fan headers because this, this case, although a good case is uh, before they really started giving thought to having room for radiators and top fans and, you know, room to get your hands in there. So now I've got both of those plugged into CPU optional and CPU main CPU header. So now both of these fans will actually work together. If you're one of those people that gets really triggered by emblems and stuff being upside down, unfortunately this one has to be upside down. I am so not a fan of these clips. Oh, I can't see this other hole. Aha, that was much easier that way. Holy crap. This is also like kind of before the era of quick release. Oh, that's not even the right screw either. I wonder why it was like really loose because this is the one that's really fine thread like you would use on like an SSD. You know this PC was bad when people were accusing me of staging it. If I was gonna do something for the sake of a video, I would say, guys, I'm doing this just to show you. I would say it. Again, before the era of being really well thought out in terms of cable management. And would you look at that? Well, would you just look at it? And I'll plug it in at the end, I don't wanna break it. What's interesting about this cable is it's got a floppy, two Molex, and two SATA on the exact same cable. So the only two things like pre-wired on the power supply here is 24 pin and eight pin EPS. And again, I'm not too concerned about this being 100 watts less. I know the hardware they're using. I still don't think the power supply is going bad, but I'd hate to go through all this work and then just have it be like, guess what, Jay, we got it home and it, it, it gave us the magic smoke. There we go. Let's see if I can't get this to actually go up through here. The problem is they didn't make a very big hole. You know what I mean? I should just change out this top fan too, shouldn't I? This is a 2400 RPM fan. This is going to be really fast. But they didn't really seem to care about the noise to begin with. So I'm not gonna worry about the noise. This ended up being like a complete teardown, which was not what I was expecting. I expected to come in today and just do wiring so that the internet would just shut up. I'm glad I did though, because we found, again, just so much more wrong. Now this one, I've got the wire hanging down here because I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this one into the chassis header. So, graphics card. Another comment was, why are they, why are they using a, PCIe network card when they have one built in. I don't know. I plugged, I plugged my ethernet into the one on the motherboard and it didn't detect. So maybe it's bad. Maybe they didn't install the drivers. I don't know, but this is the way it came in. So that's the way it's going back. So is the front side looking a little bit more presentable internet? Hmm. Do you wanna throw up in your mouth a little less now? 
Then we'll be ready to fire it up and make sure it all works because now that I took it all apart, knowing my luck, something probably isn't gonna work now. That's all just part of the fun. That's what it is, fun. It's having, we're having so much fun around here. Okay, moment of truth. Okay, everything's turning. All the fans are blowing the right way. Front fans are going, all the fans are going, you can hear them. And start to prepare. Okay, so we have to probably reset our BIOS SATA boot order because I re-plugged everything in. I probably didn't plug everything back into the same port that it originally came out of. So we're just gonna set that. All I'm gonna do right now is boot override to make sure it works. And then I'm gonna rearrange the ports to see if I can't get it to show up. And there it goes. So simple enough. I'm just gonna plug it into a different port and we'll be up and running. Guys, are you happy now? Hmm? Are you happy? Is this better? Is this acceptable for the PCMR? Does this fix your OCD? Does this untrigger you? Does this uncringe you? I hope so, because that's it. I'm done with this one. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one, where I'll probably be making you cringe again. That's what we do.